This is Babel, and I'm bringing you to SEA Regionals Day 1. We're going to the group stage already. Eight teams today, and only three from each group will qualify into day number two. The fourth and final member of each group will drop from this tournament. Now, we got ourselves a really exciting day, and already we got the first match sized up for you guys. It's going to be something a little bit interesting between Malaysia as well as the Philippines. And, um... I think we are now going into drop. <laughs> Here we go. The drop's actually almost completed. We, I'm hyped, man. Look at the gas low. I don't know if that's going to get picked, but Sky Temple's going to be the battleground for today. We've got some bands coming already. Ragar, Casadar, ETC, Fonts. They're pretty standard bands there. Nothing too surprising on that instance. Um, just like to point out the Renovasho. This is Team 1, by the way. So we will definitely try to put Renovasho 1 in uh, most of our uh, overlays. And... Um, they pick Sky Temple, a uh, very consistent battleground for them. Uh, Zagara definitely very good here with the increased vision, so that explains the first pick. Also, with some extra size up in the form of uh, some Croc Control. Uther Graming getting picked up. Um, somewhat a little bit consistent uh, without Ragar, but the thing that's different here with almost all, all of the other games you have saw uh, last weekend in um, the NA regionals is that there's a huge priority of Zeratul in the North America region, whereas in Southeast Asia, not so much. We we definitely have a very different split meta uh, per country. Renovasho is uh, from the Philippines, and we've seen some good chen from the Philippines already um, in their own nationals. But here, no chen for that instance, just going to be the gray main. I like the fact that they also picked up uh, Jaina Muradin for uh, Prospector, which is from Malaysia, by the way. So um, Jaina Muradin is very consistent, some good rotations in the early game, but this background is kind of big for that. Um, no Toronto ban that was a little bit surprising, but I, I guess that the ban on Tesla is kind of like much needed. Uh, Felsa also a great ban because of the map mobility. And Renovasho, they run Felsa quite oftenly. So nothing surprising in that instance as well. So Lunda, Abathur is getting picked up. Abathur um, provides a very unfair advantage to, to the team that actually runs Abathur because um, if you do stall out the objective, he is going to be able to soak up a lot of EXP, and that basically gives you the early game lead. In most of this instance. So Prospector here with a very nice rotation centric slash uh, split soak plan. They will probably want Zagara Abathur in two different lanes and to have that Jaina Muradin for Ronda with the uh, early game rotation. The only, int the only issue I have here with this lineup is that um, and this is Sky Temple. It's kind of big. So rotation is going to be very, very tricky. And if you cannot make uh, any value pre level 7, you're probably not going to get a lead for the second temple phase. And it's pretty hard to go hit to hit against the uh, red team here because you have like Sonia, Leeming. Sonia Tiro is not easy to take down. And I like the fact they've got a lot of invulnerability on that part, like Uther uh, Tiro. Leeming, Greymane, primarily just going for the damage. Look, Greymane is just doing a lot of work these days and uh, getting a lot of extra priority actually in SEA. I like Leeming a lot because she does provide extra burst, but the problem with Leeming is that it's not easy to land your skill shots on the target you actually want to burst down. It's pretty hard to do that, even with the uh, the flank. So that's the tricky part. All right, so we are now actually going to wait for a bit of information before we go into uh, the maps. Just to let you guys know, this is actually the match that's on s stream. There's also a second match that's happening in uh, the background, and that's going to be between Singapore and uh, Thailand. Resurgence versus Hothead Gaming. That's happening in the background right now. Uh, every single hour, we have uh, a match that's going to be on stream and a match that's happening on the sideline. In case you guys are wondering, the SEA regional is not in one location. We actually have got four different viewing parties all over Southeast Asia. One in each country, Singapore, Philippines, Malaysia, and Thailand. So if you are a local resident in any one of these four countries, do swing by to uh, the Cyber Cafe that's holding this tournament for the best viewing experience you can imagine. So today what we're going to do here is that we're going to go through the groups. There's two different groups. Um, four countries could be split up to uh, two groups respectively based on the seating. So so that's the way it is. And uh, we also got like um, a, a second day to this tournament. That's day number two with uh, the winner, or rather the top seed coming out of the brackets, the groups from day one going to the winner's bracket to face against each other. And the second and third seed from the groups will go into the lower brackets. Uh, the funny thing here is that, or rather interesting thing, not funny, but interesting is um, in day two, it's going to be a best of three all the way. So no best of fives 
or anything of that sort. It's going to be best of three all the way. And uh, th this is a little bit different from the rest of all our SEA circuits where we have a lower bracket best of one and, a, and an upper bracket best of three. I'm trying to get confirmation if this is the case. It's a best of three in uh, day two. Uh, there'll still be the rubber set in the event that the lower bracket team uh, wins the grand final series. There'll be a rubber set because they came from the lower bracket. So it's important that you make it out of a group in the best position possible. Also, do take note that in this uh, group stage, we're just following the goal league from China as well, that there is this map differential used for tiebreaker. So the map differential, what it does is that um, every single map, every single game you win, you, plus, you get one extra point to your score. It's a plus one. Every single game you lose, you minus one. So the difference between game and match here is that a match is like a best of three. A game is uh, one game in the best of three. So it's important that even if you do lose the series, you want to get like 2-1 so that you don't lose too much points. And um, at the same time, uh, there's, there's also going to be the fact that winning a, uh, a match directly gives you three points, if I recall correctly. Three points, and uh, if you lose, you don't get any. If it's a, it, There's no draw, by the way. So there is, uh, that's not going to happen. That's different from the SG Spring Pro League. All right, so a little bit of a background information prospector. Uh, Malaysia, this is a team that... Uh, I think has got Fabli Wobbly inside. A very, very nice team that's been around ever since. Uh, there was a big bang, like a, a huge shakeup in the scene in Malaysia. So a lot of teams disbanded and a lot of teams reformed. And I, and I like it because it's refreshing. Um, but here, Prospecta, they are trying to make sure that they get some good grounding. They're up against the best team in uh, from the Philippines. And uh, this is Renovasho 1. Renovasho 1 is previously known as Divinka. This is also the team in the 2015 Road to BlizzCon circuit that got second place, managed to take one game off Relics in the SEA Regionals Grand Finals. So, very, very accomplished team in Southeast Asia, I, and I think they really just want to win here. So, 2-0 and 2-1, there's a very big difference here. Uh, just want to make sure that you guys understand how important it is for both teams to play the best in every single game possible. Um, yeah, so... I look like I'm casting from a basement, but it's uh, it's actually true. But, <laughs> but this is where uh, the, the venue is. It's a really nice place. So if you are in Singapore, you want to swing by, say hi to the crew and uh, the two teams in representing Singapore, swing by to Oasis Park Lane. And if you are in Malaysia, go to Orange Stadium. Uh, Philippines, I I don't have the information on where is the, the venue ex exactly. Same goes for Thailand, but there is an offline venue. So go online, go to the respective Facebook groups, and you'll be able to find out information on that. That's it, ladies and gentlemen, going to game number one of match one and this is going to be i think group b by the way so group b match one between uh renovation one that's on the blue team as well as uh prospector on the red team so the overlays is a little bit of a flipped around we're going to fix that and on the blue team it is the philippines top seed renovation one byy playing as the uh, sonia misery pro gonna be playing as the leaming we also got haha onto the t-rail stronger onto the uther and his koa will be playing as the gray main on the red side representing malaysia from the second seed we got daily fat man on toronto exists on that abathur as well as m and gpk onto the jaina fzfz onto meridian las benales we also got probably wobbly onto that zagara and already it seems like it's pretty clear that uh, the Malaysians here just want to make sure that they split the lane and want to soak up pretty well. A uh, bit of a top lane aggression because they don't really have the best um, plan in the early stages here to go against anyone at all. Probably just want to stay in the top lane. It's a three-man rotation which makes it a lot easier to pick off any target. At the moment Meridian Lance is starting, it should be a kill instantaneously. Daily Fat Man following up with the Toronto Luna Flare. It looks really good to have that, but I think he's quite knows what's up. And um, mid lane looks to be a very, very uh, standard body soak from that uh, Abathur. Bottom lane, uh, same story to say here to try and counter against uh, the Zagara, but uh, gonna have to play very, very carefully. So both sides already off to a very slow start. No kills just yet. And um, Zagara playing it very safe. Gonna play, just gonna make sure that the Crypt Humans keep going out. At, at least she's gonna have the vision to work with. Grayman does not even have that. And at this instance, um, this is a game of patience and Murden going in already stumbled, not really connecting. Oh, what a waste it is. Could have been a kill there. Uh, but good try regardless from Malaysians. And on the blue team, it's uh, Ren 1. First phase here, going to start for the temples. Bottom lane, three uh, heroes here from uh, the Filipino team. Ren 1 doing some form of damage already to the front structures. Uh, probably probably taking a bit of a damage. But it seems like uh, Zagara is going to stay here pretty well. And there we have the temples spawning. 
do note that if you guys don't know this yet, it's important that you want to formulate a strategy around here. Some teams really love the meat temple because it, it really just uh, hampers your enemy's uh, ability to tap the wall. And a, a big foul ground, a meat lane wall, very important. Uh, there's also the other saying that it's important to take the top uh, temple because you can actually siege up a lot faster with the bruiser cam coming in before the next temple phase. So a bit of a split of strategy right now. Haha, -ha going in, somebody block coming out already. Daily family, a little bit of trouble, but a rotation already coming in from Ran 1, and it's a kill on the Toronto Prospectus. Not looking so good. They also lose some momentum on the top uh, temple. Looks like it's not going to completely go in their favor, and this is not looking good for the Malaysians already right off the bat. The split soak strategy not working out so well. The Fubbly Wobbly doing some form of siege damage to the bottom lane. Seems to be the counter and control leaning. She's still the best 1v1 when it comes to Zagara. Um, in any lane, actually, so she's definitely going to provide that kind of advantage. Alright, we also see a little bit of a fight in the mid lane area, the mid temple here. Um, VYY, it's, uh, it's nice to see Sonia being picked up, because Sonia at least can provide some form of a solo temple attempt, and I like that a lot. That definitely provides uh, an extra alternative in the event that you really need one extra body to pick up the temple. That's important. So the temple just ended here. Let's look at the damage dealt. You can see that this healing well is already gone. So the rotation on the red team is going to be a little bit of a, uh, a bad position for them. It's not like it's not, it's really not that important. Um, but you really want to have that meat lane healing well regardless. It's, uh, it's tricky, it's a good to have, and that's the price point of it. Meanwhile for the blue team, uh, top lane healing well is still standing pretty well, so I like that. And uh, front structure is taking a bit of a damage. So far, definitely you can see Renwa with a bit of a lead. But in terms of EXP, the reason why Prospectus is so close is because they had that have a third split soak the mid lane as well as the Zagara at the bottom lane. Uh, Leeming didn't really join up with the bottom lane until it's a little bit late. So right off the bat, I can see the Siege Giants getting picked up already from both sides. Um, tricky to say this for sure, but uh, this is going to be a very interesting fight here. Both sides not going to call any reinforcement. They're probably already taking a bit of a damage here. Misery Pro landing those uh, Magic Missile and Arcane Ob doing a pretty good job there. There we have. And also going to see Tiro swinging by finally. But uh, Bruiser Camp being attempted here a little bit too early actually. Uh, 20 seconds too early before the next temple gets announced. Uh, that's primarily because they had a bit of a fight and delay just now. But like I said, this is, uh, this is a tricky position for both teams to be in. Bruiser Camp also getting attempted here. Definitely, it's uh, tricky to protect the Bruiser Camp. So far, still no lead. In terms of talent built here, you can see that it looks to be very, very standard. Uh, Ballisto Spores. This is actually interesting. Uh, global range and Toxic Nas increased duration. Uh, very, very unexpected. I hold that thought, though. We have a bit of a lockdown against the Grey Main. BYY swings by FZZ. A little bit of a trouble stronger. Also going to land a stun, and it seems like Muradin's going to go down. What a kill it is. Great turnaround by Ren1. Temple now in just under five seconds. Back to the builds, though. This is a very unorthodox um, Abathur build. Not really frequent in Southeast Asia. There's that slow, which is really important in Val Ness. Uh, but Ballisto Spears, uh, Spores are getting picked up instead of the Adrenaline Overload. So not going to really expect um, a full-on engagement-centric Abathur uh, support. We're probably just going to see this um, split push Abathur build coming in. Probably going to be the Bombard Strain as well at level at later levels here. So Toronto going for the full-on uh, Pierce build with uh, the Sentinel getting picked up. Definitely going to go for the Ranger at a late stage. Hold that thought, though. Uh, top lane going to see the Abathur push out. Um, mid lane now, uh, also going to see some form of extra damage there. And it's uh, it's a little bit tricky. I don't think they can actually do much. Bottom temple, most of it's already going towards uh, the blue team. And they also pick up a free fort there. So it seems like the fort trade's not looking so good at all for the Malaysians. Um, one level down it is. Ran one in a pretty good spot already straight off the bat. Also picking up the heroics right now. Uh, go for the throat for sure. Also going to get the very standard build on Ruff of the Berserker, Divine Shield, Disintegrate. Nothing too surprising in that instance. Uh, one thing that's funny to see here, rather interesting, is that you have Leeming going for the Calamity instead of uh, the Seeker. And dominance instead of trying to be right. So it's not a full fledged uh, magic missile build, nor is it going to be an arcane build. This is just basically a bit of a sustain and uh, survival base build here for Leeming. Could be because of the fact that there is a lot of lockdown uh, coming from the red team, but teleport's pretty okay, and I would trust the clans to come out in time. Uh, meanwhile, for Grey Main, though, it's a uh, viciousness on the first one, not going to be the perfect aim. That's the only thing that's a little bit different here. I know different regions got a different way to build up the Grey Main, but hold that thought that we're going to see stronger. Take a bit of a damage here. And um, 
We also see Zakara coming in from behind. Oh my god, I did not see this coming. We are actually looking at a Nidus network here. <laughs> and uh, Abathur, this is the backdoor strategy. It is, it is sneaky, it's cheesy, but I like it. I like it because no, not many teams actually really run this strategy. And, um, and it seems like it actually is providing a little bit of distress here against the Filipino. Cheesy Malaysians, it looks like. FZFZ going for the stun, though. Uh, looks like he does have some extra ability to lock down some targets. But VYY leading the free against Jaina. Not even pick up the kill here. Five members of uh, Ren1 going to be here as well. So slow but surely, slowly but surely, you can expect uh, the Malaysians to, to just do whatever it takes. Cheesy, at least, but... Waiting for the Nidus to be off a cooldown, and they may actually be looking for the background again. I don't think Ren1 saw that coming at all. So no Devouring more, no crowd control. This is the standard backdoor build. Uh, we're going to see a clone, a uh, two actually. Two clones, uh, two clones Zagara. So it was the fake Zagara, the real Zagara. Two Zagaras pushing the back line. Again, you see the Nidus network coming out just when the objective spawn here. Greymane going back in already, but Zagara is there. And you see also the Abathur clone. This is going to be a free keep. Uh, not really sure how effective this is going to be in terms of the uh, EXP granted. But at least it is going to mean that the um, the core actually is still uh, pretty much invulnerable. You don't do this. You have to take down uh, an entire lane first. So that's a, that's a bit of a miscalculation on the part. Jaina going down. Meanwhile, you're also going to see the Toronto taking a bit of a damage. Haha picks up the kill. FZ, FZ in a lot of trouble. And all of a sudden, three men down on the side of the Malaysian team uh, Prospector. Um, for Renovasho Team 1, they know that this is this is not good. This is not good at all for them. Would be nice to see the Nidus Network actually pick up the top uh, keep, though. That would have been a very different plan. Also, you see the Temple spawning. That would have been a really good plan. But here you see Ren1 going for the boss. And the Southeast Asians, man. You trust this guy to come up with... Uh, this guy's actually to come up with something unexpected. And their minds get blown. So this is... This is actually pretty old school. We have seen uh, this before in Southeast Asia, but the last time I saw this being an, a competitive game is in 2015. Here, looks like they're trying to revive some really old school strategy. Top temple still full, fully charged up. Uh, bottom one is at about 50%. Uh, the boss is going to do some damage here. We still have to pick up the top four, though, for against the red team. So it's not going to be an easy keep here, but the boss is definitely going to go down. BYY doing a really good job holding up the front line against Murden. And you can see some extra Talon options getting picked up. Still going to be the uh, full fledged teleport build. Also, the stun on uh, the Uther, the lockdown going to go through. But oh, Ring of Frost not really connecting there. Murden pulling back once again. And you can see that the fight goes both ways. Uh, they just decided to go uh, all the way back to the fort here in the bottom left. And this is, uh, this is going to be good enough for me. I think it's going to be a 4-tech. Uh, Fubbly Wobbly going to be fine. I've never seen a Nidus network being used in such a uh, really weird fashion. You could have gone for the keep on top, but nope. They decided that they're just going to go for the fort instead. So now they've got one lane down and the invulnerability on the core is already gone. Um, not sure how, how Renovash is going to play off against this, but no boss. And uh, most of the top uh, temple charges did go to the blue team. Bottom temple charges uh, probably going to do some damage against the fort here. I rather keep keeps down 50% already. Uh, they may actually look to end this game here. I mean, if I'm the Filipino team, I will want to end this game ASAP. There is no doubt about it. You want to just uh, put him the final nail to the coffin because the longer this drags on, is not looking good at all. Bombardier ain't going to come in here for Abathur, and that's the, that's the tricky part. There we have it. It already has that increased range on those locusts. So I'm probably wobbly, a little bit of damage. VRY goes in, pops drop of Berserker. Want to get a bit of a kill here. Squad also jumping Razor Strikes, but not able to do anything. You also see the Divine Shield onto the Greymane already, but it seems like Jaina's in a lot of trouble. And Tyrell going for the Judgment. Jaina does go down at the end, and probably wobbly also will go down. Haha, -ha, just letting a lot of strength to the team here. Also going to see the Disintegrate coming out, but it seems like Murden will be able to go down next, and three men down already on the side of uh, the red team. Deadly Fat Man is all that's left. Uh, they're probably going to lose this keep here. Could be game. I don't know how this backdoor is going to work right now, but haha. -ha, level 16 just got mad. You just saw the Holy Grunt getting picked up there. Also, this is where Greyman has got a huge power spike. We're talking about the Concentrated Blast at level 16 getting picked up there. Stone Skin for uh, the Sonya is not a big of a deal, but at least it gives her some extra survivability. Uh, this was a benediction, which is really important. Double kills is going to come in here for Uther, and it's a huge level. Diamond skin also getting picked up here by uh, the Li Ming. 
with Illusionist also. So straight up, you can see that uh, blue team is in a really comfortable position right now. Uh, it's going to have the red team to try and drag this one out. Not sure how, what's the plan, but they have Overflowing Leg picked up as well as the uh, Improved Ice Block you saw there. The Mutilus, Spell Shield, <laughs> Muradin. Uh, interesting to see that actually has got a, a perfect storm instead of the Reverberation. So straight up, you could tell that this is not a team that wants to clash. They, they probably just want to go and, um, and end this game by backdoor. To Zagara could be very scary. How effective is it? That is up to interpretation. It's also interesting to see that this is a solo temple phase, so this could open up some uh, potential here for Zagara's back to all to go to go down. But 17 against 15, two level lead, nine against one kill. Prospecta playing a very very different game. And Renovasha one. They are still in control. Oh, you see the knight is coming out already. And uh, this is a sign that you would see Zagar coming in. It seems like she's just going for keeps right now, trading up pretty well. Uh, don't want to take so much damage actually coming in here. Uh, we'll just let Epithur do whatever it takes. It's just a split, a little bit of a split distraction here. Still see four to five men, four men here. Greyman going to the back line. His Koa will be in charge of uh, purging the Zagaras. And uh, in the mid lane area, it's still three versus four. Zagara just went back. We'll be fine though, but I keep taking a lot of damage, 70% there. Uh, pretty effective, but not as good as the Temple. The objective is still a lot more important in this game. And you see the meat uh, keep still standing, 60% HP. But you can only avoid th this much clash. And you don't see the Zagars going directly for core because they know they cannot take off the core there. Daily Fat Man in a lot of trouble. Tira goes in with Smite, picks up the kill. Very nice pick off against the Taronda. This could be the game ending moment right here. They already have the mercenary camps pushing the top lane as well as uh, the five man pusher against four. They have the numbers advantage. It's about 30 seconds before Taronda respawns. And a lot of burst damage against Muradin already. Ultimate evolution in just about three seconds. This will be an easy keep take. Don't think they can or rather want to try and push the lock here, but they still have the advantage. Not level 16 on the side of the red team yet. Perspector need to make something happen. And all three keeps are down. Just standard, normal plays. Coming up for Renovasho. They know they have a lead. They go for it and they punish. This, this Malaysian is really hard. It's still the first game only. Not a big of a deal. Ranger already picked up here. Does not connect on anything, but we're also going to see the Siege Giants going down the bottom area. Do know that it's actually going to be Cone of Coal as well as uh, Epithur going for Locust Brute. So this is where Epithur's uh, push is going to be a lot more effective. But a bit too slow already. All three keeps down on this side. Uh, still not going to see any anything else. There goes the Judgment once again. And it seems like Deadly Fat Man. Yep, the, the one thing that's true about this Taronda is that that's a dead Taronda. And FZ, FZ pulling bearing on Frost Connecting in the back line. Not doing much as well. Murdin taking a bit of a damage now. Uh, may actually looking to go down, but it could be a core moment. And uh, Sonia dropping a lot of HP pops. The, um, the Stone Skin. Rather, Nymphs of Steel, if you will. And it seems like it's probably going to be game. Avatar already getting pi uh, getting picked up here. FZ, FZ dropping a lot of HP as well. Probably going to go down. Will go down. The core down to 50%. It seems like the Fili Fili Filipino, sorry, got this in the bag. Renovasha wants going to win game number one convincingly. Very unorthodox strategy from the Malaysians, and it did not pay off. Tricky set of games here. Man. Okay, so Daily Fat Man was dead at the end, that's for sure. And Renovasha won with a 1-0 lead in the first match of the day. Group B it is. Also going to wait for updates from Group A. At the same time, going to check if there's a replay. Don't think there is one. Um, going to try and channel the one up. Yep. But so far, really nothing much to say here. It's, um, it's just different strategy. A daily fat man got caught out really bad. Haha, <laughs> actually not going for sanctification the moment they realize what's up here. And um, this is extra lockdown. I like that a lot. Helps to secure the, uh, a lockdown with Leeming able to go in for the burst. Really, really nice to see that. Most Tyrael will go for uh, sanctification, but this one here, um, just very much obsessed with uh, single target lockdowns because of the burst damage from both the Sony as well as Leeming. And FZ, FZ to keep it of a damage there. Very easy kills. And um, yep, so core dropping very very uh standard burst coming up from uh, renovation one once again proving that they are just consistent i don't know what's the plan here from the malaysians could be that they just want to throw uh you know went into the plans against um the filipinos in the first game if they if it works it works if it doesn't work at least they have got the next game to uh to plan something different all right so we're going for a very short break right now and we'll be back with the sea regionals this is babel solo casting 
We'll see you shortly. He has no escape mechanic. You see Leeming in the back lines. It's in the grave. A chance definitely the first target to go down. Also going to see the black macho, the black king. Coming out his quest again. A lot of verse coming from the RK now. But it's still going to be RK Punisher going to the blue team. Sonia does go down. Exists now trying to pull back out. But very low. And will go down. Tassadar in a lot of a bad spot now. You see the Grimming going in. And Tassadar with the uh, Prescience popping already. Lands that plasma shield. But still going to be a kill. And three men down on the red team. Malaysians now not looking good at all. Four men make it four. Chance the last...